diffusion drive the expanse. Reactor's down. Looks like a bad fuel pellet. A batch of them. Yeah, this one is interesting because they're in space, so it's a vacuum already. And, um, and then there, there are these pellets that are dropping. So in theory, this is how some folks think inertial fusion, uh, inertial confinement fusion, uh, like, uh, like has happened at NIF, will work, is you will drop a, a fuel pellet, and then once it gets to the right spot, a number of lasers will come and implode that pellet and uh, create fusion. It looks like they maybe base their chamber on the National Ignition Facility, which is the, the operating inertial confinement uh, device that's at Lawrence Livermore National Lab in, in California. And um, now the way they do it is they hold their, their hollow arm or their pellet um, stationary, and they'll do one shot, maybe two shots per day. Um, but the, the concepts that move that towards a reactor involve something similar to this, where pellets would drop, then would uh, ignite at a precise time in a precise location, and that would have to happen several times per second in order to have a power plant that functions. Them talking about how, oh, the pellet failed, this, you know, I think that this is a, this is a common failure mode for that type of um, fusion reaction because you have to be able to deploy pellets very quickly in order to sustain the fusion uh, reaction um, to, to maintain you know this this sort of burning plasma so I, I thought that that was actually really interesting if you you know if you were to imagine a functioning um, you know inertial confinement device those pellets would need to to work 100 percent of the time at a really high uh, frequency so that that's kind of interesting that it sort of shows that you know once they start of having failures say they I mean the reactor started shut, shutting down for NIF to get its uh, its record-breaking ignition shots they had to be very careful with the comp composition of the pellets, and they actually played with the design and the, sh and the uh, material. And so true to real life, I think, is very small. And, the, and we're talking at the micron level, like changing the layer of a material meant they got ignition or not, or you know, higher and higher fusion yield. So very small invisible to the naked eye uh, changes to the fuel pellets could do affect uh, fusion reactions when you're talking about uh, laser-based uh, inertial confinement fusion. Actually, deuterium and helium-3 is actually a very potent fusion reaction. However, helium-3 is only present on Earth in very small amounts. Helium-3 can be procured from Moon because all these traces that had been brought back from Apollo mission, they indicated an abundance of helium-3 on Moon. So if we find a way to you know, uh, mine this helium-3 from Moon and bring it on Earth, then we can actually think of having a fusion reactor where we are performing these deuterium and helium-3 reactions. Now deuterium helium-3 is uh, an, a reaction that has some advantages and some disadvantages. Deuterium helium-3 produces a helium-4 plus a proton. The, the disadvantage of deuterium helium-3 is it probably requires about 10 times the energy in order to get the same type of fusion yield as you would get with deuterium tritium.